Are we live? Oh, oh, guys, okay. Get your um, supplies for today. We're working with acrylic paints and a canvas or watercolor paper if you don't have that. Brushes, um, jar of water, palette, um, and some tissue paper. Let me. Am I on? Yeah. Okay. Okay. It's one o'clock. We're here. <sighs> Happy Monday, guys. Happy May 11th is the day we're filming this live. Welcome, welcome. I hope you got to have a look at, as we transition into summer, the format for this week. So we've got Claude Monet today. Um, tomorrow, I'm going to do a really neat demo for you. So all I need you to do is come with your questions and watch. You're welcome to always doodle or draw, but I'm going to actually be painting live for you and I'm gonna let you throw things out at me and I'm gonna do it. It's, it's a really cool lesson that's more about learning that there aren't mistakes. A lot of people remember my whole thing with erasers. I'm not real crazy about having the erasers out when we first start drawing um, because you can always turn every line into something beautiful. So what we're gonna do first is we're actually going to base coat our canvases so we can get something on them. And then we're gonna talk about Claude Monet. Is there some for tissue paper? Um, if, if you want to, you don't have to use the tissue paper, but I'm trying to think, we could probably, if you have, well, toilet paper gets kind of gritty. I was thinking maybe a paper towel, we can try that. We're just gonna clump it in with our paint and tissue paper works the best. You can try toilet paper, it gets, it dissolves with water so it gets kind of nasty. Um, so what I'm going to do is I am going to be working on a panel and Tate's gonna join me in just a bit. We're gonna put a blue on our background. now. These printed much darker than the actual piece. Um, so I'm gonna put a pretty light blue on mine, but you just put any shade of blue that you have. And um, we're going to quickly, quickly kind of put a thing of color on there. So I'm gonna show this to you and we're just gonna run it real quickly. Now when you're base coating, don't forget to dip your brush in water when you're spreading your acrylic paint. So it doesn't need to be perfect. We just want to make sure we get some color on there. So I'm going to put this all across. Here, Tate, do you want to get color on yours real fast? Here, you can put this, this color on there. You use that one right there. And then you can sit down. So. Um, cardstock is just fine and uh, canvas paper is wonderful. So, and in fact, if you do this base coat real quickly and we let it dry, the cardstock will end up being fine. Um, watercolor paper is also fine. I am just quickly running across. There's no right or wrong way to put this on except to be speedy and to try not to be too thick with it. Um, so, you see, I've got enough on. I'm not even all the way to my edges, but that's okay. I'm just, when I'm moving it back and forth like this, I know I'm doing that real quickly. It's just helping to spread the paint and to help it to dry. It also gives you a little better coverage. So I am just gonna go ahead and make sure I get that on my surface, and then I'm gonna let it dry. And Tate just walked off with my water jar because I didn't put a second water jar on there. He's over on the table. So Keaton's gonna grab me a second water jar and I'm gonna use some water and spread that to the edges. Um, oh. You can use watercolor today. If you're using watercolor, um, we're gonna be doing a scumbling technique and it doesn't work as well with watercolor, but I think you can at least get the idea of impressionism. So, um, and as always guys, I'm, I'm really happy for you to use whatever you have at home if you want to um, try to do this with colored pencils, uh, 
use one of the techniques we've talked about before. And if you haven't seen those, when we did colored pencils, if you use uh, some rubbing alcohol or some baby oil, it can help spread it across your surface a little bit. Um, but the main idea is you want to cover the white. We want to get that background so we've got our main color on it. Lots of times we use this in acrylic painting when we're prepping our canvas, but because Monet used what's called a scumbling technique, which I'm gonna show you a little bit as we let this dry, we need a color to be on the underside of that technique. So, I have mine quickly painted blue. Tate is painted, painting his. And you can finish painting yours and then we're just gonna let it sit. Now, a lot of times if we're trying to do something quickly in the studio, we put a blow dryer on it. Or what you can do too is if you get behind in this lesson at all, remember we post these uh, to Facebook, which is Meg Paducah, which you're watching, or we'll also later on put them on my YouTube channel, which is under my name, Kisa Houseman. So um, you can always find those later. I've also had questions saying, oh my goodness, as these free live sessions kind of go uh come to an end and we start doing things that are a little bit differently, will I take those down? No, no, no. I have more art lessons than there are days in the, in, in the week, you know, so don't worry. Those will stay up. There are so many more lessons to come. Um, I am switching to some paid online, which is more what we do in the studio. You would have come in the studio. They're going to be very similar in format. Um, there's going to be Mondays that occur just like today. There's also going to be week long camps, which are Tuesday through Friday. There's going to be special workshops. It's going to be something that would fit with your schedule. If for some reason that doesn't work for you, I'll also be posting instructions on the blog, which will be as soon as I get it hooked up, we lost everything. We had a terrible technical difficulty and the website disappeared, but we've got it back up. And we're getting that blog on there and people are looking for those PDFs, but it will have PDFs. It will have what we're having like Thursday and Friday. You'll get a sample on that lesson. And um, it just won't have as much of the live component. But also if you notice on the schedule, sorry to keep talking about this, but did you see what's on Wednesday? Talia is doing a happy dance. Some of you are doing happy dances too. We're gonna draw Baby Yoda, so watch for that. So let's talk about Claude Monet. We give these sheets a lot. These will come in most of the art lesson kits, but we give sheets like this in the studio with classes. They're just kind of to help you if a student learns and their parent wants to learn more, or they want to share it with somebody, or you want to just put a little binder and put these together. They're great little lessons. They've got applications on them. Um, but this is one we have for Claude Monet. French Impressionism. You've heard me talk about this. Well, guess what? It all started with this guy. This guy, Claude Monet in France. How did it start? Well, he was a trained artist. He went to school. His mama was a singer and she wanted him to become an artist. His dad owned like grocery stores and ship stores and he wasn't as crazy about the art thing. But Claude Monet loved painting. So he went with what? the traditional schooling is. You know, you look at the masters like we're doing today and you learn to paint them and he would go to the school and he would see everyone painting the beautiful statues and all the things and he would look out the window instead and paint what he saw. That's what he started to do. Instead of looking to what other people had painted, he started drawing and painting what he saw. So he started doing this and really concentrated on the way light looked and water movement and how things looked in different seasons and different days. And the first painting he exhibited with this style was a sunrise. It was called Impressionism Sun, Impression Sunrise. And all the press go, oh, the Impressionists. And Impressionism was born, all from his first painting that he put in that special exhibit. So here we are. Then he goes on. He has a beautiful garden that he puts tons of water lilies in and a beautiful arched bridge. And he paints water lilies for 20 years. So that's why when you say, oh my goodness, this, this just has to be perfect. 
think about it. Claude Monet painted water lilies in the morning, in the evening, in the different, in the sunlight, in the clouds, in different seasons, because every time he did something, he learned something. So every time you do this, don't worry if this one isn't exactly the way you wanted it. You learned something. That's what Claude Monet did. So that's what we're going to do today. So what we'll do is we're going to come down to the table. Keaton's going to come down with me. And we're going to come to the canvas. And I am going, we're going to work on painting our water lilies. Tate, you want to come on over here and put your canvas over here? And we can see what we can see at the bottom of the deep blue CCC. Okay, I'm going to put mine, see if I can do this, where we can share these, Tate. I think we can share these over here. Yeah, I think we can. Do you have your blue, baby? How about mixed media paper? Mixed media paper is great. I love mixed media paper. Um, it will work. It will work wonderfully if you put the base coat on it. So when we talk about watercolor paper or mixed media paper, if you prep your surface, so if you take acrylic paint and you coat it, you basically prepare your surface to receive acrylic paint. So that's, that's what we did. I like how yours looks. Can you see mine and Tate's on there? Okay. So you've got your brush, and we may need some more brushes, and I've got palettes for us if we need them. But, and tell me what you can see on this, Keaton. Do I need to move it over? There we go. Okay, so here we have his water lilies. You see how we've got this stroking right here, up and down, up and down, up and down. You see that movement that he has. So he's capturing the water and the reflection of things as they hang in the water. You see it's up and down, up and down, up and down. So we're going to create that. And then just while we're looking at this, do you notice how the water lilies go across this way? So when you're looking at those, that's how you're understanding how your paintbrush moves. Your paintbrush moves up and down, up and down, up and down. And when we're doing these, our paintbrush is going to go across. You can almost see how he makes a little circle. If I take a little point that out, it goes like that. So, yeah, like that. You have to make that sound. Can you go just like that? So we're going to do the background. We're going to do this up and down movement. Now I want you to notice, see how there's green here and blues here and green here and blues here. You don't need, you want to make sure your surface is uneven like this. So you want some of your blue to show, and then you want some of your green to show. I'm going to be a much lighter and brighter than this today so that you can see it hopefully a little bit better on camera. But we're going to create this up and down, up and down. So let's get busy with that. Are you ready? So I'm using, as you know, I like flat brushes. I'm using about, um, oh, a medium-sized brush, a little bit larger, but I tend to like to work with a little bit bigger brush. Uh, different manufacturers size their brushes differently, so I can't read what size this is anymore. Um, this is a Royal Taclon, which is our studio line that we use. So, um, so we're going to go with this up and down. So I'm going to start with green. And Tate's going to use a bright green, and I'm going to pull. See how we're just letting it pull? I'm just going to pull it around like that. Tell me if I need to move. See how we're just making these streaks? You can pull it the other way, but we're keeping it up and down, up and down. Your paper can go either way if you want it to go in landscape mode or in portrait mode. Because this, but a lot of his he would paint in landscape mode because he was painting landscapes. But you can go either way, but no matter which way you're going, we're going top to bottom of our paper, top to bottom of our paper. And see how I want to let the blue show? That's right. Up and down. So I'm just working one color green. I've got my blue underneath. Notice how that blue looks so much darker once I start adding the green than it does when it's just against the white. This is very impressionistic, 
impressionistic to notice how the color changes, how the light appears and how the other colors appear. We talked about pointillism just briefly, and, and that's really where you really get into that study. So, oh, Tate, I like your ups and downs. Okay, so I've just stuck with the same color green. Right now I only have two colors on my canvas. So, and some places where I first touch my brush, you notice it's darker. And then some places where my brush pulls and doesn't have as much. If you remember the acrylic lesson, we're getting some dry brushing with our piece here. Okay, we have any questions, Talia? Everybody doing great? Okay, do they have blue and yellow? If you have blue and yellow, you can mix green. Um, and then you can end up getting that. If So even if you have watercolors, you can mix your watercolors too. Okay? So now put your brush in the water. Put your brush in the water right there. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I have still lots of blue showing, but I've done a lot of movement across my canvas. Tate has lots of blue showing, and he used a narrower brush, so you see his lines are thinner. That works perfectly fine. Okay, so now I'm going to come back in with another shade of blue. If you don't have another shade of blue, you can mix some red with it and get a purpley tint. Um, you can use my shade of blue and I'll use your shade of blue. How about that? We'll flip flop. Oh, you want to use that one? Okay. So I'm going to use another shade of blue and I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm going to concentrate more on where my blue areas are. So I'm just going to put that in there. See how I get that? Thinking more just kind of where my blue areas are. So each time I'm going to have a little bit less. And I'm using the same brush, but you can feel free to switch brushes. And it doesn't matter if it overlaps because we want to have that. See how we're getting this movement of that up and down, up and down with this. So other artists, this is interesting, the Impressionists really all hung out together, you know, showing their paintings, painting the water lilies. There are other artists that came to Claude Monet's garden and painted his water lilies. Now, I may have talked about this before, but does anyone know what, it's a French word, it, but it, it's the word when you're going to paint outside. So, if you don't know it, don't worry, I'm going to tell you, but if you do know, this is, it didn't start with Monet, this type of painting, where he would go outside. Oh, that looks great, Tate. Um... So you see, I kind of starting to move that in. Notice we're just building strokes of color, building strokes of color to get this up and down, up and down. So, are you ready? Now I'm gonna take my green. I'm gonna take a little green. Can you take some of your green? Right here. And I wanna darken it a little bit. The best way to darken green is to add a little red. Doesn't seem like that would work, but oh, I added a little too much red, so I'm going to get a little more green. There we go. See how I get that kind of foresty green there. Okay. And now I'm going to come back over where my greens are. And I'm going to do this. Now what I did was I painted the background the light blue and then we let it sit a bit. Then I came back with the green, just a regular grass green, and I came across and went up and down. Then I came back with another shade of blue. Here are my two shades of blue right here. You can do it any shades, just we're representing water. So he had lighter shades, darker shades, he had pinks. Um, 
And so we have, we came back just in the blueberries. Now we're going to come back. We darkened our green with a little bit of red. And we're going to come back and see, oh, it's kind of brown in there. See how right next there? We're going to come back into our green and darken that up. So, but again, the loose strokes, those loose strokes. So now I'm going back to revisit where I've put some green. Okay. Staying, kind of making my green and blue areas. I'll show you the painting again. So we've got green areas, green areas, and then blue areas, blue. How's everyone doing? Did anyone know the answer yet, Talia? Um, a few guesses, and what are the guesses? Um, Robin says all fresco. All fresco is good. I think that's. Um, Dana says um, plain air. <gasps> air spelled A I R E. Uh huh. Plain air. Plain air. Okay, Dana. Dana got plain air. So al fresco is the idea. I believe that's more to dining, but it's the same idea of going outside. Plain air painting. Excellent job, Dana. Um, Plain air painting. So outside. So we're just adding our, I'm doing mine upside down so y'all can see it. Oh, I like that tape. Did you darken your green and add some green in there? Yep. So We're just adding that in. This is very relaxing to paint this way because you're just la 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 la. There we go. Are you just trying dying to touch it, Keaton? Keaton keeps reaching out. He wants to touch the paint. more up at the top. I feel like I it's a little darker up top, but again, remember this can look any way. Now we are not looking at Monet's actual garden. We're having to represent from his work, but we're getting that idea. So I might encourage you if you like this, after this lesson, maybe go outside and find something to paint outside. Go paint Plein Air. Okay. So Tate, you got a little here. You want to use some of mine? So now I'm going to revisit the blue with that first color I used. So let me just go over while you're making your strokes. I painted it all this lighter shade of blue. Any shade of blue will work. Yours will look different than mine. Then I added just a regular green in, kind of spotty all over. Then I came back and um, I added, after my green, I added another shade of blue to my blues. And then I came back with a darker green. So you see how we're going green, blue, green, blue. We're just playing with those. Green, blue, green, blue. So I'm going to come back with a blue. Now, you could mix all sorts of colors and shades, but for a purpose, because we're going to be a little speedier in this lesson, I'm just going to come back with some of my blue. So, <laughs> so now this, I'm blending it in a little bit to my green, so I'm getting some of that, but I'm putting that blue back in. And it's okay. You want it to be wet and mushy and kind of mushing around and being that play of light. By doing these quick strokes, the idea of Impressionism is that you're capturing what you can see right now. That it's not permanent forever, so you must capture it quickly. You must do it fast. Do it fast. Because that's what the light is going to change. The the day is going to go on. The time is going to come. So it's kind of fun. It gives you complete release. You get to just paint as fast as you want or as slow as you want, however you like it. Okay, I'm kind of feeling like our water is starting to come together. 
So now my color scheme is different, but can you see we've got these strokes up and down, these strokes up and down, up and down. So you should have something like this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back in and I'm going to do what's called a little scumbling, which means I'm going to work the paint in together in a rotary manner, meaning I'm moving in a circle. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to scumble, 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 scumble. So I'm kind of, but I don't want to do it all over. I'm going to scumble those colors together. I'm just going to come to some of the areas I want to blend. Okay, see what happens there? Then I'm going to scumble over here. Now, we first did that base coat, and we want to have that base coat because sometimes when you scumble enough, you see you start picking up that base coat. It lets light come through. So we're going to scumble over here. S-C-U-M-B-L-E, scumble. But we're just kind of moving it together. And I, if you notice, my brush is jumping over. But I'm moving my brush around in a circular manner, like so. So I'm, see how I want to keep some of that vertical back and forth, but I want to blend. I want to get, see how it looks kind of mushy in here? And then you can see our vertical, mushy, vertical. Mushy is a very technical art term. But I think it gets the point across. You see how it just looks really blended and you lose your detail? That's the scumbling, scumbling as we move it around. So my brush is, if I do it slowly, is moving around in a circle. And I'm blending some of those areas. So if I put it right up against, it's just right up against the canvas. And you wanna be gentle with this because you can hurt a brush if you're not gentle, so. But you see how we get some of those areas, and I'm mixing all the colors that are on here, getting kind of that scumbling effect. But don't do it all over because we want to get some of those. Yes, that's right, Tate. See how you, ooh, that's nice scumbling right in there. We're going to scumble at our top right here. Let's get scumble along. I don't know if you really scumble along, but that's what we're going to say we're going to do. Okay. And if yours aren't blending, add just a little bit of water to your brush and pick up what's wet and it will move it in together like that. How's everyone doing? So you should end up with something that kind of looks like this. Even your palette looks cool, Tate. Where you still see some of those streaks, but then you have areas that look very kind of mushy and cloudy together. Muddled. Muddled. That's the perfect word. Talia just said that word. I don't know why. All I could come up with was mushy in my head. I think it's because I was mushing the paint. Were you mushing the paint? You want to mush some paint? So, so we end up with something like this, where we've got... Still, those vertical streaks, and then our scumbling in there. So, I'll let everybody get caught up to where they like where it is. And now, if you have your tissue paper, a piece of tissue paper. we're going to take a piece of tissue paper. First of all, I'm going to blot mine because I just want to pick up some of the color in my tissue paper. I'm not worried about blotting. I just kind of want to get some of the color. See how I'm doing that? It does help mush it, and it's going to help dry it for us. Okay. And I just have a little piece that I've... You can, you can do this as many times as you want. Yep, yep. I'm picking up... What? Can you use brushes for what you're doing? Oh, you, I'm, I'm really, this has less to do with the canvas and more to do the, with the tissue paper. If you don't have tissue paper, don't worry about this. Um, I'm more, it does help dry the canvas. I'm more worried about getting the color on the tissue paper. So 
it's, it's a quick and fast cheating way for me to get the color on the tissue paper. Yep. And it helps if you put it, hey Tate, lay it flat like that. Oh, you've already done what we're going to do. Okay. And so I'm just finding where my paint's wet and picking it up. But you don't have to have this for what this background looks like. But what happens is you end up getting some of your tissue paper right there. We're going to set that to the side for just a minute. And you can end up, I'm only going to show you demo with this little bit, but you can end up doing this all over when we get to that area. And it doesn't matter what this looks like. I just am trying to get a little paper, a little paint on there so it's going to blend with the picture. So where's your, where's your, uh, okay. Oh, here, let's see if we can unfold that. Let's see. Oh, that's okay if it ripped. It's kind of, we're going to tear it anyway. So, oh, here, we're going to unfold Tate's real quickly. If it happens, if it wads up. Um, so, oh, a coffee filter would have worked for this. I just thought of that. As long as you have a little bit, yeah, that'll work, baby, just like that. Okay, okay. So just let it, let it, let's let it lay flat like that. Okay. So now I'm going to grab a different brush, something probably a little bit smaller. Tate, I'm going to give you one too. Grab one over here. Here you go, honey. Grab that, and we're going to now. We've got all cool colors on here. So do you notice how these, because they're catching the light, are yellows and reds and oranges um, and uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to come in with some brighter colors. We also have some white and different things like that. So again, let's talk about this stroke while you're finishing doing your scumbling in your thing. Notice our background is there. That's how we get not just the contrast of light because the paint works this way. And now when we're working it this way, the paint is going to catch the light differently. So when you put it on here, because your stroke is going this way, it's physically going to catch the light differently, but all those are going across. It also, because we're catching this as a reflection, it also changes the way the reflection. So it kind of stops that reflection. It goes across this way. So we're going to, Talia's running to grab my yellow. Um, let's see, and my white. And that will give everyone a chance to do their tissue paper. And we're letting it dry just a little bit. Tate, let's get your tissue paper all the way done. I'll put yours over there. And okay, so we're going to start with white. And let's put our water lilies in. So. Yeah, grab your brush, and we're going to start doing this. Now, notice we're just going to do the shape like this. We're going to put them in just along the line. Yep, just going like that. Remember, we're going across, and it doesn't matter where you find them. If you're looking at this, see they're grouped in different ways. We're going to lay them in with the white. And some in here. He has a little grouping here, several across the middle, and a few up here. So let's put those. Again, quick strokes right here, quick strokes. So we'll put some more up here. Yep. Now, instead of making a big circle, you can make a flat circle. See how you made a flat circle right there like that, Tate? That looks great. We're going to do that. And sometimes you can even just put a line, just like that. So I'm laying them all in with white. 
Again, making sure I'm going this way. And then I've got a little yellow here. I'm going to come back in right on top of my white because that white's going to pop that. And I'm going to lay that color. It's as though I'm making flat, little flat ovals. But you see how we start to get that in there? So, again, it was capturing that light right at that moment. So, it's as though we just catch it and like that. Like, doop. Okay. I'm sure that's okay if it dribbles a little bit. See, look, Monet would have little dribbles. That looks like a dribble to me. Yep, I have a little dribble there. Okay, so here's where we're going to have fun with the tissue paper. So I'm going to take a little bit of that tissue paper that I have smushed, and we're going to start creating our lilies with it. So what I'm going to do is we're, because it's tissue and it's just, what I did was I took a piece about that big. You can see it in my hand. Of course, I have paint on my hands because I always have paint on my hands. Um, but you can see it's about that big. and I have some paint on it, so it's going to blend in, and I'm just smushing it up. There's no right or wrong. I'm going to make sure I have some wet paint on it. I'm actually going to smush it into my piece. Can you see that right there? Mm -hmm. Okay, we're going to do that a few times, and then we're going to come along with our reds and pinks. So I'm going to take, there's that piece right there. I'm going to just smush it so I gather it and smush it together. So. This is mixed media paper would be perfect because we're making a mixed media piece. So, and then when you put it on, you're putting it on with the paint. Now, it's so thin, and because we've added some paint to it, it should end up adhering a little bit better. Yep. Okay, you can borrow some of mine if you want. So here, again, there's a little piece like that. I'm just taking it, I'm kind of smushing it all to the middle. And then I'm adding, I'm adding white, kind of as though, as though you were adding glue, but we're using the paint and we're just placing it, we're keeping it in our water lilies, where our lily pads are. Here's one, do you want some of mine right there? And there's some more tissue right here, if you want some more. Oops, where's the... Okay. So, again, to the center, just put it on there. You want to make sure you have plenty of paint and you kind of get as much paint on that surface. Here's some more, baby, if you want that. I'll put some more. I'm going to put a few more, and then you can always add as many as you want and make them as big or small as you want to do. Um, this is just a fun way to end up doing it and getting that texture. You can think of ways you can do this in painting and other thoughts. How's everyone doing? Everyone's probably smushing their tissue paper. I'm going to put a few more. I'm going to finish my tissue paper. And you can do as much or as little. You can layer this up. You can do it. Come back and add more. I'm going to smush that in. Give me one right there. Mommy likes to get messy, doesn't she? This looks great, Tate. Right? Okay. Let's see. I might give myself one more right there. Now, we've got them attached with the white. We're going to come along with a pink or a red. I might use a little bit of both. I'm going to put both of those there. And I'm going to start hitting the tips of my tissue paper. What happens is it almost does the painting for you. Because I'm getting these impressionistic shapes just by following the shape of the tissue paper. You see how that happens? I get that. 
So I'm adding my pinks. You can add your yellows, your reds. You want to add a little red to your tape? And I'm following along. Now, you can add red elsewhere if it doesn't have to be just on your... You can add it next to your flower. That's a nice job. Can you give me some red on that one? Let me add some down there. But adding the tissue adds not only a three-dimensional effect, but it gives me the way my brush can just catch those edges of that tissue paper and really get that feeling of that Monet water lily. So I'm going to put a few more and we'll just, I'll just, here, add a few pink and red dots in there so we can catch a few that we just add just with paint depending on how you do it I, I could sit here and I could put tons more uh, um, water lilies in here but I think this will get our point across so Keaton you want to come on up and we'll talk about it Okay, so here we have our version of Monet's water lilies. Now remember, he painted water lilies for almost 20 years. So we've got water lilies day, night, fall, spring. That looks fantastic, Tay. And remember we talked about doing our paint in directions, which direction our paint needed to go following Monet's guidelines. We did our scumbling, where we combine the paint in a circular manner. Then we also um, talked about doing our horizontal strokes. And remember that circular movement of our brush? We did that in scumbling, and then we also did it in making our water lilies. And then we used tissue paper to add a three-dimensional effect that's going to help build that quality of Impressionist painting. So. That's been fun. I'm going to stick mine up here, right here. I'm going to wipe my hands on the table. Actually, on my apron. That's why my apron looks like it does. That's why I have to wear an apron, because I get paint all over me. Um, and I hope you will continue. You can continue to add as many water lilies as you want. You can have fun with this and try again. Remember, you've got 20 years of water lily painting to do. And you can go outside and paint something from nature in applying air. Um, paint just like the Impressionist did. So I hope you'll join me tomorrow. You don't really need any supplies. You can always bring a pencil and paper, but bring your thoughts and questions and ideas. And we're going to talk about, I'm going to do a live demo for you. We're going to talk about how there aren't any mistakes in art because you're awesome. And I hope you had a great Monday. Um, Tate and I had a lot of fun doing Monet with you. I also hear there's a birthday in the house. Do you hear there's a birthday in the house? You think it's anyone's birthday? How old do you think they are? You can't use a year older than you. Year older than you. They're 11. So, Marin, I hope that I said your name correctly, but happy 11th birthday. You ready to go? I think we've done this Monday. Art is man's nature, nature is God's art. We'll see you all tomorrow. Bye.